The manager was as good as his word, Scullery continued. I came home from the works with six wheels and a cab. A cab is the latest thing for engines, he told me. I hope it will cheer you up after your disappointment. Reneus chuckled. It cheered him up too much, and those coaches made him worse. Such a handsome engine, they tittered. Six wheels and a cab? So distinguished. It's a pleasure to see him. He soon got too big for his wheels. Scullowy smiled ruefully. I did too, he said. Go on, Reneus. He boasted about his cab until I was tired, Reneus said. You should get one like me and be up to date, he would say. No, thank you. You look like a snail with that house on your back. You don't go much faster either. Slow am I? Let me tell you. Who was late three times last week? Oh, it's no use talking. You're just an old stick in the mud. He called me more names and we quarrelled. We ended up back to back, not speaking. It went on for days and days. One dark Monday morning, Scolowi had to take the workmen to the quarry. It had rained for three days. You always pick on me for wet days, complained Scarlowy. You, said Mr Bobby, have got a cab to keep us dry. Come on. Scarlowy slipped and snorted on the wet rails. He began to wonder if cabs were An hour later, I was warming up when Scarlowy's guard came coasting down in an empty truck. He stopped by our shed. There's a landslide beyond the tunnel, he said. Scullowy's run into it. He's stuck. Show a wheel, Reneus. Look lively. I'm sorry, Mr. Peter, sir, but that Scullowy's too swanky. He says I'm a stick in the mud. Well, he can jolly well stick in the mud himself. It serves him right. But, went on my driver, there's poor Mr. Bobby and the quarryman. Does it serve them right too? The guard says the mud's like treacle. Oh dear, that will never do it. We must save them before they get something. And off we puffed with two trucks and some workmen. Things weren't too bad after all. The men had pretty care they are not, not leave its colour way back. He was hissing and grumbling dreadfully, but we didn't listen to him. We cleared the rest of the line and I pushed Scarlowy out of the way before taking the quarryman to work. Mr. Bobby cleaned and oiled his wheels in motion so that when I returned with the coaches, I could help him back. I'm sorry I was swanky, he said at last. Thank you for helping me. Not at all, I said, but I was still cross. Then Scalloway began to laugh. I'm the stick in the mud after all, he gurgled helplessly. Not you. I laughed too, I couldn't help it. He looked so funny. We were still laughing when the cleaners came and we were still laughing when they left. Poor engines, they said, tapping their foreheads. But we weren't mad. We'd learned sense and have been firm friends ever since. It was nearly dark. The listeners stirred and stretched. Thank you, Scarlowy and Reneus, they said. Now you've told us about the old days, we can give you both a splendid birthday next week.